written by Huey Huel. If you're listening to this, then I'm going to assume you found yourself in some deep shit. The kind of deep shit that is knocking down your door or stalking you through a dark tunnel somewhere. Furthermore, I will assume that you are frantically searching to figure out what you can do to see tomorrow. If not, consider yourself lucky. Someday it could be you. Couldn't hurt to give this a listen. Might save your life someday. Before anything, you need to make a quick decision. Do you think I'm full of shit or not? I could tell you my credentials, my successes, my failures, but you don't have time for that. If you think I'm some idiot spouting off of the mouth, stop listening and grab the closest thing to a weapon you can find. Whatever is on your ass, being armed is better than not. But if you're willing to take a risk and trust me, keep listening. I'll do my best to get you through this. First, you need to understand where you are. I don't mean country, city, province, or state. I mean where you are in the real, grand scheme of things. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. There isn't an infinite number of realities, and there sure as hell isn't just one. The closest number to the real figure people like myself have is nine different realities, each one unique in its own way. But this is another thing you don't have time for. The quick and dirty explanation is it's a sliding scale for how much the laws of reality can be changed or bent. There is much more to it than that, but we are in horseshoes and hand grenades territory. Close counts for you right now. Corner one is the no-nonsense part of reality. Ghosts are always some idiot wanting attention. Aliens can't get to Earth, and the things that go bump in the night are dangerous, but only due to drug addiction and poor morals. Corner nine, on the other hand, is full of wonders and horrors. Myths in corner one hardly match reality in corner nine. That being said, we can scratch corner 9 and 8 off the list. If you were there, you would know more about this than I do. As far as corner 7, anything I could teach you, you probably learned in grade school. The one thing I will say, though, is that you guys have something big coming you have never seen before. Maybe I'll get to that later, though. That leaves you between 1 and 6. If you are in the first four, you are in luck. The worst thing you are going to be dealing with is a person who is your physical and or mental superior. Of course, in corner one, this is likely to be a much smaller issue than in corner four. So we are going to handle the first four first. If you are dead sure what you're dealing with isn't human, Feel free to skip ahead, you're going to need the time. My first piece of advice is to prepare. My second, considering your chances of heeding the first is slim, in my experience anyway, is to call the police. Whether you're dealing with Ted Bundy or some 7 foot 5 monster with a burned face and an axe for a hand, they are going to up your chances of survival. I know, not always the case in day-to-day -day life, but at the very least, they can be bodies firing guns, eventually. Find a place to wait it out, and let them protect and serve. Though I highly suggest simply running when they arrive. If they can't kill whatever is ruining your night, it's going to be twice as pissed when it's done with them. If calling the police is a no-go, run. These people like you to think they can be anywhere, do anything, and while the higher end ones have skin like a rhino and can toss a Volkswagen, at the end of the day they are just big, fast people. If you have any experience in track or endurance sports, you have a good chance of getting away. Take it and don't 
lose your cool. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Obviously, if you have a vehicle, that is a faster getaway, but there is a reason running is sometimes the best option. That brings me to my next piece of advice. Watch out for traps. The higher end people are not just faster and stronger than us, but smarter. And likely have set up a few traps to kill or maim you. And your car is going to be the first place they set things up. What to do if you're trapped though? If you're in a lower corner, it's a scuffle. Do some damage and get away. But if you're dealing with the big boys, I have a whole different set of advice. First, don't panic. These people use fear as just as much of a weapon as garden implements in their bare hands. You are outmatched, but you do have one significant advantage. They are doing this for very specific reasons. Each one of the big folks has killed hundreds in a standard serial killer fashion. They are bored. They didn't see you and think, I'm going to kill him. They thought, I want to break into his back window at 3.14 a.m., terrorize him for 1,800 seconds, sever a limb, then torture him in his own home for a week. They are fighting to pull off as close to their fantasy as possible, and they all have giant egos. Be a challenge, not a victim. Guns are your best bet. Most people give up on them after a couple shots, but don't let the fact that the thing is still stalking towards you make you think that they're useless. Guns are your best bet. Most people give up after a couple shots, but don't let the fact that the thing is still stalking towards you make you think they're useless. They're not invincible and they cannot regenerate. They tend to feel little or no pain and be built a lot more sturdy than regular people. On top of that, most of them are a hell of a lot older than they seem. This means they have had sometimes a couple hundred years to learn to patch themselves up and know what a dangerous wound looks and feels like. Keep out of reach. I don't know why, but they seldom use guns themselves. Though watch out for spring-based projectiles and thrown weapons. And keep firing. Your fragments aren't doing much, but you are doing damage. Do enough and they will leave or die. If you are unlucky enough to live in a country with sensible gun laws, things are going to be a lot harder. Great piece of advice. Two inches is two inches. I'll let you make your own dick joke. What I mean by that is, while it might be harder to get to important parts, once you get about two inches past muscle, you are doing some lethal damage. But let's be real here, you are going up against something that outclasses you in every way. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, you're likely fucked. Do all this perfect and you might be 20% less fucked. But that's just an estimate. Off the table are the following targets. Head, nuts, and heart. You are not going through its spine, or its rib cage, and in all the time I've been doing this, male or female, a junk shot just pisses them off. That leaves limbs and guts. Your only chance is to go for the hands and feet. If you are massive and have swung a weapon before, you might sever a limb, but unlikely. Running under the assumption you are using a large, blunt weapon or a fairly weighted blade. Wooden bat or a machete, let's say. If you have anything less and you are trapped, make peace with your god and hope you are not in World 1 so you get to meet him. Destroy the hands. Feet shots work too, but are more dicey. I've seen these bastards walking on a mangled stump. But no one can hold a 30 pound meat hook with a twisted up mess of a hand. If you still have your insides on the inside at this point, I have only one more piece of advice. Downward diagonal attacks. You want to bury your sharp weapon as deep as you can into the prick. Rip it out and do it again. A blunt weapon, you are trying to rupture organ groups. But if it gets stuck, let go and back off immediately. 
You've likely killed them, but they're petty assholes and will take you down with them. Once you notice it's not able to hide its pain, you've almost won. Stay careful and wait till the lights go out. Make sure to crush or sever the head when it's down, or just stab it till you have to throw out the carpet. They've been known to play possum. But what if you are in a friskier corner of reality? Things get a little more complicated. Your threats can be divided up into three basic categories. Sure, there's a little overlap here and there, but as I said before, close counts. Normal threats. Kind of a misnomer, but these are regular things with some attribute increased or changed. Think the 700 foot man, or a tiger with human-like levels of intellect. These are beyond the realm of common, but still just variants of a type. 2. Metanormal threats. Threats that have been given life by some kind of erythral energy, magic, or advanced science, but do not really wield those kinds of powers themselves. A half-man, half-porcupine, a creature raised from a dark ritual, or a revenant of an innocent victim are all good examples of this. 3. Paranormal Entities Anything that is primarily composed of erythral energy, magic, or advanced science and uses such to attack. Ghosts, will-o'-wisp, uh, sentient AI all fit into this category. If you think you're facing a category 1, you get the best news of all. All the previous advice applies. Your chances of pulling it off just got reduced somewhere between 50 and 5,000 percent. Hey, at least you got the good news. If it's a category 2 shitting in your cornflakes, the diagnosis is a bit worse. Weapons are good, but you're going to need information. They will have a weakness, just pray it's something like wrought iron, not the eye of a virgin cicada. Enough firepower is likely to take them out of the fight, but you're going to need to know what makes them tick to take them out. Take a deep breath if you are now realizing you're in category 3. Bad news, let's start with the cleanest end of the turd first. Ghosts, demons, etc., they're not the figures from your religion. I'm not going to debate you if you have found the one true way, but believe me when I say these are not what you are thinking. They have limits. Find them. The others, though, God, that is world ending shit. I've been lucky to never run across a rogue AI or something like a sentient virus, but. They exist. There is no advice, other than scorch the fucking earth and hope for the best. On that happy note, I'll leave you to your fate. I hope it works out for you. If you live another day, maybe I'll post some of my exploits for you. Or some more advice. If you get through these kinds of situations, you tend to develop a taste for them. Best of luck, Andrew McRae. Hey, check out the Pit series written by this author. You can click it here. Thank you for listening. You can probably handle another horror story, right? <laughs>